Okay, so we have just started the recording. Now, uh, the session is being recorded and you will be able to see the recording of this YouTube channel if you leave in between. If you're not able to join on time, you can watch the recording of this session on the YouTube and we will be sharing the link with everyone. If you have any other queries, please write your uh, queries on info at telcolon.com or visit www.telcolon.com. So that's all from my side. Uh, I'll just pass it on to Mr. Bharat and he will be talking about his experiences and then we'll be starting with the session. Uh, Bharat, I hope you're able to hear me. I'm just yeah, making the... you. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I'm just making you the presenter and it's over to you. Yeah, please go ahead. Thank you so much, Sanjay, for the invitation and for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Very good afternoon, good morning, and good evening from any part of the world you are joining us. My name is Bharat Agrawal, or I can call Dr. Bharat Agrawal. I finished my PhD uh, in 5G Radio Resource Management in Open RAN from Dublin City University in Dublin, Ireland. Uh, I started my PhD in 2019, and I finished in 2023. Uh, during my PhD, I worked uh, whole and heartedly on 5G Radio Resource Management and the Open RAN. I look into the uh, different type of open source softwares like Open Air Interface, SRS RAN, Open 5GS. And I try to build some of the test beds on those things and try to uh, deliver those test beds in real time environments also. Uh, a part of that in open run, uh, I also do a lot of contribution in terms of building some accepts using some machine learning algorithms and on the some other fronts also. Uh, recently, I have been working for a leading operator here in Germany. Um, I am working as a, as a technical expert for 6G. Uh, basically, I'm building uh, these uh, build, building the architectures for the 6G uh, networks, and we believe that 6G will be an architecture where different networks will talk to each other in terms of subnetworks. And so we are building those uh, architectures, and I am contributing to other 3GPP meetings also. So that's all from my side. Uh, this is my experience is all about. Uh, I basically come from India, and I did my bachelor's in India only, and after that I worked for uh, four years in couple of MNCs in India. And uh, lastly, I was working as a project scientist in IIT Delhi. Those who don't know about IIT Delhi is a research institute in India. It's called Indian Institute of Technology in Delhi. And I've been working there as a project scientist for two years. And after that, I started my PhD. And now currently I'm in Germany working as a technical expert for 6G in a, one of our leading MNOs. Sanjay, awesome. should I start the presentation? Yes, yes, you can start presenting. Uh, uh, I'm not sure uh, if I have connected you on the right, uh, this thing. Uh, so are you able to share your screen or I need to connect? Yeah, I can share my screen, yeah. Yeah, I have the permission. Can you see my screen now? Uh, not yet. Yes, it's coming up. I can see that now. Yeah, please go ahead. Okay, perfect. Okay, so we are here to talk about uh, open radio access networks or open run. Uh, so we will try to cover a couple of questions uh, and try to answer them in this presentation in terms of what is open run, why open run is required, what are the different standards for open run, what are the different organizations who are looking into the open run. What is the current research on the open run? Because it is very important to understand like why do we need open run and what is not being done right now in the traditional networks or I should call monolithic networks that the research community is thinking, okay, let's move into the direction of open run. Uh, does open run is politically motivated or there's any geopolitics involved in this open run? So we'll try to answer those questions. And at last we will look also on the future works. And uh, at last we have a live demo, which is based on network slicing. Uh, we'll try to explain you how network slicing basically works and we'll give you a, some real life demo uh, on, on the network slicing by using a, an open source software, which is an open air interface. So what is open run? So the, there are different nomenclatures which is available for the open radio access networks. I think you get confused. Sometimes you, uh, you listen about open run. Sometimes you listen about O run. So I think they are different. They are not exactly same so we try to need to understand okay then if someone has written open run what does it really means if someone is writing o run then what is it really means so open run is open with space run is basically an overall movement of disaggregating the hardware and the software and opening up the interfaces now when i say uh, the open run movement overall open run movement of disaggregating hardware and software so it basically means that we will not run everything in a single piece of an hardware, right? We will distribute some of the things in uh, in nearby the nearby the users or nearby the base stations, 
and some of the uh, functionalities we can put into the uh, other part of the hardware right and we also open up the interfaces so in 4g everything was black box everything was been on by three different operator uh, three different vendors we all know nokia ericsson and huawei uh, maybe zte also and but now there are a lot of uh, vendors and the partners available in the 5g domain because everything is open open without space into the ran is basically a telecom infra project tip uh, tip group and anything related to the ip deployment so anything what is open run deployment will take place is as per the requirements of tip so tip will tell okay this is the requirements you have to build these things and then open run will do for this last but not the least is oran alliance which is the o hyphen ran uh, is basically an alliance with uh, reference to the organization or the itself so i would say you can call it as a 3gpp what 3gpp do for all the telecoms or for all the standards uh, which is also stands for third generation partnership project in a similar way there is an oran alliance in a similar way the 3gpp builds standards uh, like a new radio 36.6 or uh, they comes with the new releases release 18 release 19 uh, there's a similarly like oran alliance uh, who basically builds these standards and the uh, and the different releases for the for the for the open run now, what are the equivalent identities and uh, and what are their relationships? So, first of all, as I talk to you about the 3GPP, uh, so 3GPP basically builds the reference designs, like what right now I'm doing for one of the MNO, that we build the reference designs for the 6G architecture. In a similar way, 3GPP does it for 4G, 5Gs, and all those things. Uh, as I told you, Orion Alliance is something similar to 3GPP. So, Orion Alliance basically looks into the, again, specifications, building the releases and the standards but uh, from the perspective of oran there's another organization which is called an sd ran uh, open network function sd ran open uh, open uh, osc which is oran uh, software community they basically tells uh, the oran alliance okay we want this type of features you know we should have this type of features or not but at the last is tip as i mentioned you in the last slide it's called as telecom infra project and it will tell uh, the Oran, this is the particular use case. You have to develop this particular uses. You have to look into this direction, right? And uh, then we have to use, uh, I will I will not talk about a lot right now, rigs and everything. I will come in the later stages so that I will not cover everything in a single page of a slide. Now, what is, let us try to understand the evolution to the open run, you know. So 3GPP introduced the concept of DUNCU, concept as the evolution part towards a disaggregated run. So if you see the image on the right, on the left hand side, you will saw an RRU, which is called as the radio remote unit or remote radio unit, which is connected to the baseband unit uh, with, with the front hall. And then with the back hall, we are connected to the 4G or the 5G core network, which is basically called as a traditional RAN, or you also can call as a monolithic RAN. In 3GPP approach, which is 38.8001, the 3GPP comes and they introduce a new uh, transport option, which is called as mid hall. And they break the BBU, which is the baseband unit, into two different components. One is called a CU and another is called as DU. CU stands for centralized unit and DU stands for distributed unit. Now, how to connect CU and DU? They introduce a new uh, front hall uh, uh, transport option, which is called as mid hall. So a part of that, they keep the everything is same. So uh, the RRU is connected to DU by using front hall. Uh, CU, which is connected to the core network by using a back hall. So we, we have a split uh, which, uh, between the CU uh, from the baseband unit to, to in the terms of CU and the DU. Uh, the, major, the major option, the major reason behind doing is because uh, they want to keep the lot of real-time processing near toward the base station or near toward the head. Uh, and a lot of non-real-time processing can be, can be placed uh, uh, on, the, on the cloud or at the data centers. Now, let us look at the very high concepts. Right and try to understand that. Okay, how does this basically uh, base station? Hey, Bharat, uh, we have lost your voice. Uh, Bharat, can you hear us? Hello. Bharat, can you hear us? Hello, Bharat. Can you hear us? Hello. Hello, Bharat. Can you hear us? Yeah. 
Yes, uh, I'm aware. I'm just trying to coordinate with Bharat. Something is wrong with his audio. Yeah. Uh, just wait. Just wait. Let me check. Hello, Bharat. Can you hear us? Bharat, are you able to hear us? Hello, Bharat, can you hear us? Bharat, can you hear us? Hello, just wait for a second. Uh, I've tried unmuting him. That is not working. Let me, I'm just checking with him. Let me. Uh, Bharat, uh, I think either you were on mute or there was something wrong with your audio. We lost you completely. Now, can you hear me? Yeah, it just started a minute back, uh, just, just uh, 10 seconds back. Yeah, we lost you for around good four or five minutes. When you oh. opened this slide, uh, not even, yeah. So when you move to the next slide, uh, we lost your voice. This the, next one, the next one, this was okay. This one. Yeah, uh, yeah, so when you opened this, we lost your voice, right? So after oh, that, we didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay. no problem. Please go ahead. Okay. So, what I'm talking about here is looking into the uh, directions, like, okay, basically how the test beds are built and uh, how does they look like uh, in, the, in the terms of the picture, right? So, if we try to understand those uh, pictures, so first of all, you have two different pictures here or two different test beds. In the first of the test bed, we have uh, we have a monolithic G naught B. So we do not dividing them into two different components or two different identities, as I mentioned in the last PPT. Uh, you can, uh, so in the first uh, FH1 option, we have a PDN server, which is connected to the core network uh, over a 10 gig ethernet. And then we have a core network, which is connected to the monolithic G naught B over a 10 gig ethernet. And then we have an ORU, which is connected to the monolithic G naught B over a ORAN front hall ECPRI based protocol. And then we have an RF connection with the UE. If you if you look if you look that in the terms of uh, the hardware, so we have one hardware where we are running the OAI core network plus PDN server. Then we have an OAI G node B, and then which is connected to the ORU, and then which is connected to the COD CUE. But if you try to understand the another option, which is the FH2 option, uh, which is the front hall two, in which we basically divide the uh, monolithic G node B into two different parts, which is called a CU and the DU. And here comes something new, which is called as an F1 interface, right? So this F1 interface is a new interface, which has been bring, bring in, uh, which is also called as a mid hall, right? Uh, which connects the CU and the DU, and it's not a monolithic G node B. And apart of that, everything remains the same, right? Okay, so um, what are open networks and what are, uh, what are the open standards we have? So let us try to understand this thing. Uh, we on the on the left hand side, if you see, these are all the protocol layers that we have RF, LoFi, uh, LoFi, and then we have an HiFi, MAC, RLC, and the PDCP. So in the 4G LT, everything was based in the baseband unit, right? So the LoFi, HiFi, MAC, RLC, and PDCP, everything was in baseband unit. And then in the RF, in in the RF part, we only have the uh, RRH, which is also called as a radio head, and everything was closed, right? There was no open base, and nothing was there. Now there is something also called as high layer split, split two, which is called as HLS, which is stands for high layer split two and WG stands for work group four, right? So what they do, they open up one uh, option, which is called as an F1, F1, where we have a DU and the RU running in the one machine and the CU is running in the one machine. So CU is only running the PDCP and the DU and the RU is running the RLC, MAC, FI, LoFi and RF, but the interface between them is open, F1 interface. 
Uh, then we have an LLS2, which is also called as lower layer split 2, which given by the work, work group 4. And then they say, okay, why don't you uh, uh, split between the, uh, uh, split the DU also. So now uh, the DU will have different things, you know, now the DU is having the RF, uh, sorry, the RU will have different things as well. As it, it is now having the RF and now it's also having the lo-fi, right? And we have a new interface between them, which is called as XRAN, or we also call as EC3 e protocol. ORAN in January 2018 comes and say, okay, uh, everything is good enough what we'll understand in the pre uh, previously, but now let us go with this simple architecture where we have an OCU, which is running the PDCP. It will talk to the ODU over an F1 interface. ODU is running the RLC, MAC, and Hi Fi inside in, and then ORU have two different functionality which is an RF and the uh, lo-fi and they are connected to each other over over the ORAN which is also called an EC3 protocol right so this is called a split uh, split architecture which has been given by the open RAN now there are different split options that has been given by the open RAN let us try to understand those things right So first of all, let us uh, understand the whole uh, protocol layers. We have RRC, Radio Resource Control, PDCP, Package Data Convergence Protocol, RLC, Radio Link Control, MAC, MAC uh, Media Access Control, five physical layer, and then we have an RF. So we have option one, when we, when we uh, put the RRC different and PDCP different, in a similar way, we have option two, option three, option four, and we have different eight options, right? Now you can have the combinations of different options and then you can say, okay, this is the split architecture I'm going to support. 4G or LT is always work on the split eight or option eight, right? So if I say it's an option eight, it means that RF belongs to one identity, which is an RF, uh, which is called as an RU. And a part of it, all the functionality will be based in the basement unit, right? The PDCPs, RLC, MAX and RRC, they all will come into this one unit, which is there. And, and then we have connected to the EPC because the 4G core network is called as EPC. Now there's another uh, split uh, eight, another form of a split eight, but this time you are not having uh, the 4G core network, you are having a 5G core network. So that's why we uh, put another protocol, which is called as SDAP, which is also called service data application protocol. So this is a new protocol that has been given into the 5G, which is specifically for the user plane, right? And uh, we have the 5GC here, right? So you can see still we have the split eight, uh, and uh, we can call it CUDU, but everything is running in the same hardware and we have a new core network and we have a new protocol. Now, this, now here the things become quite interesting, which is called a split 7.x. Now, when I say split 7.x, it means that you only do the lower layer split, right? So this is called as lower layer split, where we use the option X, option 7, and we put uh, uh, inside the RU two different functionalities, lo-fi and RF. Right. These are the two functionality that have been put into the uh, into the RU, and a part of that, every other functionality like high, like Hi-Fi, MAC, RLC, PDCP, RRC will all belong to CU and the DU, and then again you connect it to the 5G core network over the NG, which is the next generation protocol. Then uh, there is come another split which is called a split two. Now it is called as high layer split because you are splitting the higher layers. Here you come up, you come up with the split two, which means that okay, we will draw a line here and we will put the RRC and the PDCP inside the CU, and a part of that everything will be put into the DU and the RU. So see, a part of uh, option two, we put everything RRC and PDCP in CU, and RLC, MAC, Phi, RF, everything was put into the DU, and we connect the CU and the DU over an interface called F1 interface. But we combine both of them and we say, okay, we have a split called split 7.2x, right? Now in this thing, we put the split 7.2x means we have split 2, which means uh, RRC and PDCP is running in the CU part, split 7, which means the lo-fi and RF is running into the RU, remaining things will run into the DU. So now this is the ORAN split 7.2x, which is quite famous, you read everywhere what split 7.2x right so this is how the split 7.2x was been built was built where split 7 comes from the lower layer split 2 comes from the upper layer but again another question comes what is x right does anyone know what is x in this can they can write your answers in the chat i can see Uh, 
नो एक्स इज नॉट फॉर स्पेशल नॉट फ्यूचर एक्स वर्जन ऑल्सो uh it is uh, not in the num numericals is an alphabeticals uh not no miha is not accepts so basically we have two different types of okay uh not beam forming yeah it is basically a beam forming uh, concept here uh but uh, uh but uh, it has to be defined in terms of alphabetical orders like a b c so we basically have two different versions is for split 7.2a as well as split 7.2b right so we have a and b so whenever you read the uh, data sheet of any ru right any radio unit which is given by from different companies which i take the name like analog devices benetel national instruments you will always find that it is having a split 7.2a or split 7.2b so a means that some of the functionality belongs in the low fi some of the functionalities belong in the high fi but if it is split b then some another functionality will belong to phi uh, low phi and another functionality belong to high phi i will come into the later slides will tell you what functionality basically uh, if belongs to high phi it belongs to split 7.2a if some of the functionality is shifted to uh, b then how how come it becomes split 7.2b so this is how uh, the whole uh, diagram will look like uh, between the split 7.2x series of 7.2 Uh, i will not call it a or b right uh, so we have basically rf front end we have digital front end now we introduce the low fi you see now let's let's try to understand here if let's say this is not split sort 7.2 it is only split 8 can you please tell me will it have the low fi and front hall transport mike i will repeat my question again right now you are seeing a picture of split 7.2 radio unit do not consider it as a distributed unit it's not a centralized unit it's a radio unit right which basically transmits your downlink and will captures your uplink signal in this thing you find four different blocks one is says rf front end another says digital front end then there's low fi and then there's a front hall transport right and it is going to the odu and at the left hand side we have antenna so it is taking the signal from the antenna i think picture is quite clear to all right now my question is let's say if someone comes and say no i want a picture of split 8 what are the things that you will remove from this block please write your answers in the chat okay i think deepak uh, has given a good answer which says low fi remove the low fi deepak do you also think there is something i have to change in front hall transport yeah many of the people are right when say kartik uh, ismail and tripesh they say like okay remove the low fi good enough that answer is correct but do i need to change the front hall transport rf front end antenna will remove no i don't think so rf front end antenna will remove if you remove the antenna then how yeah the answer this from sudhanshu is correct we have to remove the e cipri uh it should be cipri only then it will not be e cipri right because then uh, it's a new protocol which has been given by oran alliance e cipri but uh, if we are uh, putting a split 8 ru then we only have to go with cipri so yeah good answer from sudhanshu thank you uh let's go later into uh, let's go more into this image now you find different uh, variables different uh, uh, blocks here which is called as dpd uh, digital p distortion cfr thrust vector reduction duc digital up converter uh, pimc is optional ddc is digital down conversion right so these are the different uh, options that you or different block set that is used in the rf front end and the digital front end and uh, okay can you tell me one more thing in this block in this diagram it is very interesting what is different from split 8 uh, as compared to split 7.2 why do you think split 7.2 is more benefit or than compared to split 8 okay let's let, let me i have asked a lot of patients let me ask you a very straight to forward question 
why do you think split 7.2 is more important as compared to split 7 uh, or split 8 i just okay not put 2 also because we know 2 comes from the higher layer split right and 7 comes from the lower layer split and right now if we are considering are you we are more interested in lower layer split right so let us consider split 7 only why split 7 is more important as compared to split 8 anyone try to answer in the chat that is true Deepak. it allows the deployment of oran but why oran things okay why oran say okay no let's go with split 7.2 there should be a reason behind it right why why the split 8 is not uh, happy for you then why split 8 say okay no i'm not good for you then? interoperability i think it comes only after when you choose the 7.2 again my question is we already choose the 7.2 now the answers that you are giving such in is interoperability yes because it is open source 7.2 allows good transmission latency and throughput okay and i think still the answer is missing carlo yeah your answer is right it will gives you low latency because you're putting a lot of real-time processing near the ru it will definitely lower down the rrc and pdcp in seven no pradeep i think we got i think you got confused here so rrc and pdcp basically split two right and uh, split seven is basically the low fi and the high fi so that's why it's always always called split two as higher layer split and always called split seven as lower layer split if you combine both the splits it's called split 7.2 anyone i think one of the guy give the answer in terms of beam forming right or mimo right so i think uh so the answer is to enable the MIMO transmission, we need a lot of parallel streams, right, to transmit the data. So that's why, uh, yeah, exactly. Hali Hamza, you are right. It's due to the beam forming, right, and due to uh, due to the MIMO. Uh, that's why we try to use the split seven dot two or split seven uh, at the front end, and we put uh, the FFTs and IFFTs from the. Uh, uh, from the hi-fi uh, from the physical layer into the into the ru right so there is another option which should be very much interested for you is called as scf does anyone know what is scf stands for see i want to make this interest uh, this even very interactive right i don't want to be just one way communication i wanted the full duplex a small cell forum that's very true, uh, true right carlo very nice so uh, there's another organization which comes into the picture and says, okay, we are called a small cell forum and we does not support uh, split six or we do not support split 7.2 or <laughs> yeah, that is true. Uh, so it does not support, uh, it does not support, uh, we does not support split 7.2. Uh, so they come and say, okay, we will come with the split called split six. We don't support split seven, right? And let me go to another pitch back and when say split six, right? Let us try to understand this picture again. Now, small cell forum says that I'm not interested in split seven. I'm interested in split six. This means that high phi and low phi and whole phi will belong to the RF, right? Whole phi will belong to the RU, right? Now only the DU will consist, con consist of RLC and the MAC and the RRC and the PDCP will be into the CU, right? Am I right here? So DU will only have the MAC and RLC. RU will have PHI and RF. And there's another new protocol, which is called as NFARP, right? So this is another protocol, which has been given by small cell forum is called as NFARP. Now, another question that can be asked in this picture. What is the advantage that small cell forum thought that, okay, let me go with option six. And what is the advantage Oran says, I don't want to take the split six. Can anyone tell me? If you want, I can, I can increase my, uh, I can repeat my question. What is the advantage which has been seen by small cell forum that they thought that, okay, let's go with split six, not with split seven. But Oran says, no, we will only go by split seven. We will not go by split six. Any would like to answer this? So the answer is centralized scheduling, right? Uh, centralized scheduling, no, Ashish, I would not say centralized scheduling. 
to be very frank i don't understand what you mean by centralized scheduling but no worries but the answer is not centralized scheduling yeah i think for small cell you don't care about latency you are in local indoor area very nice carlo yeah the answer is, looks like quite interesting and this is this is on the right path of the answer yeah 6g sudanshu okay no i don't think so 6g uh, will be more on this of those things for sure uh, but uh, right now no carlo answer is quite good uh, so yes yeah, small cell forum simply says that uh, we our split is very good for the areas where you don't need a lot of throughput now think about it when you put all the five layer functionalities are you you are basically not considering the mimo and the beam forming concepts here right uh, all those things will not be considered here and they are only good enough for the areas where low throughput is required so usually uh, small cell forums uh, split 6 is always used in the rural areas where there is a less user density and the low throughput is required and oran split 7 is always used in the dense areas in the urban areas where the high throughput is required right so what traditional ran versus open rans brings for you again i will go so traditional ran is the bbu is designed internally as a black box bbu uh, implementation vary from vendor to vendor bbu connects to a proprietary radio re remote radio unit through a vendor specific implementation of a common public radio interface which is also called as cipri protocol right but open ran is choice interoperability and low cost now one of the guys says interoperability here comes the interoperability right uh uh it's, it's a deaggregation de of the black box in the terms of cu and the du uh it's have the cots hardware for du and the cu i know everyone knows what is cots right is anyone know does not know what is cots if you know can you write the answer in the chat commercialize of the shelf right Uh, so nowadays you don't need a very specific. Uh, it's not necessary that it will be a server, right? It can be anything, you know. Even if, even if a small user equipment or a user mobile phone can be in courts. Any split based on the bandwidth and the latency between the DU and the RU. Uh, resource pooling as multiple RUs can serve through a single DU to achieve the cost efficiency, power consumption reduction. So that's what Open RAN brings for you, right? exactly i think pradeep gives the best answer for the cots that same hardware can be used for deployed anything right so it's not very proprietary it's not very specific so yeah very good answer pradeep so what are the advantages that open ran brings for you right uh, the advantages is avoid vendor lock in it enable faster innovation open industries to new players reduce capex quick time to the market enable design flexibility enable new services and applications right so i think this is quite pre pretty clear like let's let us discuss in detail about every every point that we talk about right now the advantages right we say it avoid vendor lock in which basically means okay you don't need to rely only on nokias ericsons huawei zetis right you any any guy in the world can develop their own uh, you know on test bed of 5g because everything is open source it enable faster innovation because you don't again you don't need to rely on only only the few vendors who will do the innovation for you right uh it open industry to a new players as again because it's not proprietary everything can come up any anything can can be there it reduce capex can anyone tell me uh how does it reduce the capex please write your answer to the how does it reduce the capex exactly because it will have the more vendors definitely it will reduce the cost for the buying equipment yes that's for sure right uh quick time to the market as i told it is enable more innovations more faster innovation so that's why it's quick time to the market enable design flexibility because everything is open source and you can gather a lot of data from all the different uh, all the different identities which is working in the open run and it enable new services and application because it's not limited to anyone any any guy any any vendor or any uh, operator who wants to have uh, this important application in their networks can use those things because it can ask to any of the vendors available in the market to build any application for them but there are a lot of disadvantages with open run also brings for you right first of all is the technology maturity right because we can deploy bbu functions on cloud 
okay we will discuss all these questions later right when we complete the this thing uh technology maturity because uh again as i told you uh it has been done by different uh, vendors and the techno and oran alliance is not something with 3gpb also says yeah go ahead and deploy it so yes definitely there's a there's a lack in technology maturity the another point is interoperability and integration you know i have done a lot of integration testings uh, of the different cus and the different dus and everything right uh, how operators are facing interoperability to defy open run because you know let's for an example take a very simple example let's say the du comes from some another x company and the ru comes from another y company right we know that x and y will talk in the same language which is called an ecpri right but we don't understand really like okay what is installed in du and what is in, is installed in ru right how to bring up the ru how to bring up the du right what are the how what are the signals that the du supports because you know uh, when du talks to the ru there are the four different planes c plane u plane s plane and m plane right so this is and and you really don't understand like for example you don't know if this particular type of an hardware is good enough for me to achieve 100 megabits per second because everything is running in the software right right so it is not sure that uh, uh, that uh, this particular type of an hardware will be good enough for me so uh, when you read the oran alliance does you read anywhere this type of an hardware can be used to achieve 100 megabits per second or a one one millisecond of less latency no right so there is no sheet still yet available by oran alliance which says that if you want to achieve this thing go with this type set of hardware in my phd i have i have tried like almost 10 different servers from intel from you know um there were intel xeon processors there were intel i9 processors intel i7 processors i have tried with different os ubuntu's red hat you know different things you know and every time you have different performances you know it all depends upon how good the os is how good the machine is so you know there is a lot of work that has to be done and a, a, a very good definition has to be built then it's a complex automation as uh, sudanshu says the rig will come into the picture definitely rig will come into the picture but it's not very easy not very straight to forward uh security you know as i living in a germany germany is quite quite uh you know think about like what is uh you know who, how does the security will work so definitely security is more more important now can you please tell me why security is important for open run anyone who who basically works in the area of security so i think uh, open interfaces need more yeah definitely yeah this is a very straight to forward answer for sure because you know different vendors open source no one knows how secure it is you know anyone can come and pitch into it and can take your data out of the all the open interfaces and then we also say we have machine learning models and how you decide the security of machine learning models right Uh, then we have a price opex you know we have to keep uh, you know running our uh, our our own uh, networks and uh, we need to see that uh, uh, how good we are running it uh, many a times things can go for a for a toss you know we have to change those things and last but not the least is the performance again i told you how can you decide that you want a 100 mbps of a throughput with 1 millisecond of latency you know so those those are the questions so oran deployment scenarios so basically the deployment scenarios is defined by oran uh, to define how to compose the elements of oran architecture uh, which is cu du ru new real time uh, near real time rig in the actual deployment within the cloud and physical locations it is defined by work group 6 uh, split 7 is the major aspect of the deployment perspective because it gives you a physical network function which is oru deployed as hardware and virtual network function uh, functions deployed at o cloud which is also called as o, uh, open cloud it's called so called as cudu right so what is o cloud o cloud is an computing uh, cloud computing platform comprising physical infrastructures nodes to host oran functions like a uh, near real time rig odu etc supporting software components example operating system virtual machine monitoring container runtime management and orchestration functions right So from this slide, we can see that work group six basically looks into the direction of deployment scenarios. 
the most important deployment scenario can be thought from the perspective of split seven. Why do you think split seven is so important? Is any answer again? Again, now you can see what group six says, okay, if you want to deploy their uh, the ORAN, you have to think it from the perspective of split seven. Why do you think so? So the answer is basically the non real time and the real time processing, right? Because a lot of the split seven, uh, exactly processing is the uh, is thing, you know, because a lot of split seven basically uh, takes out the lot of real time things and put it near the base station and take the non real time things and put it at the cloud. So point of presence and latency, right? So let us try to see here what we have in this in this figure. So first of all, we have a regional cloud is placed at a central location in a data center for an operator with a large capacity. Then we have edge clouds, which is close to the network edge. Azure resources at a low distance place to decrease latency. The distance between the regional cloud and the edge cloud will be less than 2,200 kilometers. Multiple edge clouds per region cloud. So another point, multiple edge clouds can, uh, one regional cloud can support multiple edge clouds. Now we have cell sites, right? So cell sites is a location where the radio transmission is conducted. And the distance is always less than 20 kilometers, right? So one edge cloud can consist of multiple cell sites. Now let us try to map this re uh, regional cloud, edge cloud, and the cell site in the terms of DU, CU, and RUs. And we'll try to understand where should we deploy uh, the DU and the CU and the RU, either on the O cloud or near uh, in the physical network function or as a VNF, right? So there are two different things. One is called as PNFs, which is called a physical network function. And one is called as VNFs, which is also called as virtual network functions. So different locations. Now, what are the benefits that you get? So if, let's say if I put the RU, DU, CU, UP, and CU, CP. Can tell me, anyone tell me what is CU, UP, and CU, CP? Okay, Sachin. Uh, okay. Mm, centralized unit control plane. I think uh, the answer from Sachin was right. User plane and control plane. But can you tell me what are the protocols will be involved in CUUP? What are the protocols will the CUUP have, and what are the protocols CUCP will have? Yeah, Sachin is F1C and F1U. That is also true. But my question is, what are the protocols CUUP will hold, and what are the protocols CUUCP will hold? Mm -hmm. No. Okay, so. So the answer will be very straight to forward. CU UP will hold RRC and the SDAP, which I already told you. And the CU CP will hold uh, the RRCP uh, uh, and the PDCP. Uh, no, sorry. Uh, SDAP and the PDCP will be hold in the CUUP and the CUCP will hold the RRC and the PDCP, right? So now we have uh, four different un unit. Yeah, CP will be, mm, yeah, exactly. So let's say RU, DU, CUUP, CUCP and, uh, and near real time break all are put at the cell side. Now, what are the advantages? It will the lowest possible latency that for processing because everything is near to you. But the deployment is the most expensive word because cell site requires all the functionalities, right? What are the another option that we have? Let's put the RU at the cell site, DU at the cell site, CU, UP at the cell site, but put the CU, UCP at edge cloud and near real time and rig at the edge cloud. Collectively manage the resources from the connected cell site. This is the advantages. Disadvantages processes the data, including the user plane traffic at the cell sites, but reduce latency, right? Now the last uh, deployment is cell site, edge cloud, edge cloud, and regional cloud, regional cloud. What are the advantages that it will bring you? It will implement a cheaper deployment with rest processing power needed at the cell site. Putting CU uh, near real time break at the edge cloud gives the freedom of get, gathering processing from more cell sites, but it increases the latency for the data processing. So for EMBB MMTC services are latency constraint applications. The deployment may be more centralized where OCU deployed in the regional and ODU is in the edge. For the URLCC services, the OCU shall be deployed closer to the user, OCU and ODU at the edge cloud. 
right so it all depends upon what type of services that you are interested in if you are interested in embb and mmtc then you need to look into a different uh, deployment scenario if you are interested in url cc services then you are interested in a different type of an option so there are six scenarios so uh, scenario a where So we have uh, scenario A, the where are you, uh, DU, CUCP, CU, uh, UP and near real time, right? So you can see that RU is a physical node network function, PNF, DU is at the edge cloud, CU is at the edge cloud, everything is at the edge cloud. So we all already talk about it, right? The whole base station is deployed at the edges as the virtual network function in the O cloud, while ORU are distributed to the cell side as physical network function. This minimizes the delay, but the cost of such deployment can be the largest compared to the other scenarios, right? Now let's talk about scenario B, where RU is physical network function, DU is in edge cloud, CUCP and CUUP is also in the edge cloud, but near real time break in the regional cloud. In scenario B, the actual processing of the base station, that is CU and the DU, is deployed at the edge. So we will keep the latency, but the near real time is put centrally to the regional cloud. Uh, data center to capture a broader view of the network and this is the initial use case adopted by the ORAN. Scenario C where RU is, uh, is, is a physical network function, DU is at the edge cloud whereas CU, CP and CU, UP are regional clouds and near real time is also regional cloud. In scenario C only the ODU is at the edge, OCU to the regional DC uh, to save cost and decrease energy consumption at the edge location. OCU in general is working on the similar time scale as near real time break and thus they can be put together. Only the o front, open front hall has the stringent latency requirements while E2 F1 interfaces can be more relaxed. Scenario D where we have RU as a physical network function. DU is also again a physical network function but CU, CP, CU, UP and near real time break is same in the regional cloud. In scenario D, the setup is, is as in scenario C, but the ODU is realized as a physical network function or device. This option enables the use of high performing and optimized hardware for Mac hi fi layer processing. Scenario E, where RU, DU, CU, CP, CU, UP, near real time, everything was placed on the cell on the regional cloud. In scenario E, everything is virtualized down to ORU, which of course can be used hardware accelerators. In such a case, put ODU together with ORU at the cell side with high performance quartz hardware for file layer processing. This considered for the future use as a virtualized version of low file and the other ORU's aspects are not yet there. So it is quite a futuristic uh, uh, scenario of scenario E. And scenario F again is a very futuristic scenario where RU is a cell side other than DU, CU, CP, CU and all are regional clouds. Uh, scenario F, all elements are virtualized as in scenario A, but with different locations for ORU and ODU. This scenario is also considered for the future use cases for the similar reasons, right? Because again, we need low fi and everything uh, in the clouds. Now scenario B can be used for the URL CC application. What is scenario B is for you? That you place the re uh, near real time break in the regional cloud. Uh, and the edge cloud have the ODU and the OCU, right? Uh, but, and the physical network functions have the ORU. So ODU can be connected to 10 or tens of ORUs to achieve pooling gains or statistical multi, uh, multiplexation. So you can see a single ODU. Okay, Pradeep, you are not seeing my screen. Uh, does everyone have the same problem? Okay. Okay, perfect. Uh, so ODU can be connected to multiple ORUs or 10 of the ORUs to achieve the statistical multiplexing, right? Scenario C should be used for EMBB applications where we put the OCU and the o near real time break on the regional cloud, whereas edge cloud only have the ODUs and the cell sites around only ORUs. ODU stays at the edge while OCU is moved more towards the centrally at the edge regional cloud. This is suitable example for urban scenarios where EMBB and MMTC applications are much more widely used. Such deployments allows the saving of the computing power and the energy consumptions at the edge locations. This is because one OCU may handle up to tens of ODUs while ODUs can connect up to tens of ORUs, right? 
so now out of all the six scenarios try to read more about scenario b and scenario c scenario b and scenario c right so now we know all the different hardwares lot of different splits and everything which is available in the oran let, let us try to see what are the companies which are working into this domain and everything right so system integrators who basically says that we will buy all the com components from different uh, persons and we will integrate it in our campus right so you have rakuten you have nokia right uh, and then you have cisco so tech mahindra different different companies are acting as the system integrators uh, then we have vran software appliers who basically giving a virtualized run we have uh, we have meta parallel wireless mavnir ramido labs juniper networks and then we have ru hardware and software suppliers so we have specifically suppliers who are building the ru right some of them i've already talked about adi analog devices uh, uh, you know benetel ni so these are the companies who are just building the uh, uh, rus there, there are companies who are just building the cu and the dus right for example dell hp intel samsung slr and uh, secure virtualization platform suppliers so there are some of the o cloud suppliers right for example vmware uh, google microsoft uh, zt samsung and then at last it, it comes to chipset suppliers who supply the chips is and then there are very few in those things so we have nvidia we have qualcomm samsung xilinx which also called us now amd right intel mega chips so these are the companies so basically you have to see what is the your research area right uh, practically you have to see which is the research area that you're working in and then try to see those are the companies products and everything for example if someone says okay i have very good at the du i need to work in the mac layer so you're basically working in the du now you have to see what are the du suppliers and hardware they are giving it what the new technologies they are bringing in right so so i told you there are 11 i didn't told you sorry so there are 11 working groups under oran alliance so work group one two three four five six seven 8, 9, 10, 11, and every work group basically works for different uh, domains, right? So, for example, uh, you can see again if you want to read more about those work group groups, uh, again, it depends upon your research area. If you work in the non real time break, you go to and read about all the uh, architectures or every document which is given by work group two. Uh, if you are very much interested in front hall, go for read for work group nine, right? So, it all if you are interested in security, go and read for work group 11. So again, it depends upon you what type of work groups you are interested in. Uh, there's a lot of documents available, but it all depends again your research area that you are interested in, right? Then uh, these are some of the uh, uh, research groups that has been formed under the uh, Oran Alliance. Uh, I think the most important one is the last one, which is called as NGRG, which is also called as Next Generation Research Group. I'm an actively member of this group because this group is basically oran for 6g right so they are basically building the oran for 6g there's a lot of things going on in this uh, group and i'm a key member of this group and i also uh, contribute my understanding my architectures to this particular group now what are the key topics uh, to look into this first of all is, uh, is the energy efficiency right first of all is the energy efficiency First of all, is the energy efficiency, uh, which increase the energy efficiency of all the ORAN building blocks. General framework for energy monitoring and measurements. Energy management through native intelligence. Uh, second is security. Uh, former inclusion of ORAN certification in GSMA, NESAS, EINSA. Uh, development of security controls for specification, procurement, system integration, testing and operations. Right. Uh, last but not the least, maturity. We need to close the gap between the traditional as well as the ORAN. We need to minimize the integration overheads as well as we have to mature the certification and the badging, right? But out of all those three topics, you know, the most important thing is energy efficiency, you know, because as in working into the field of MNO, I think uh, energy efficiency is the most important concept. And I think Open RAN brings a lot of uh, advantages for you to make your networks energy efficient, right? And why is it so? uh because um first of all uh 
when you talk about energy efficiency a lot of the people think about okay we want to make our radio energy efficient for that what we can do we can use power amplifiers we can use adcs we can use dacs we can make them uh, you know we can make them power efficient or something like this but that's not just it this is not where only the power efficiency sit there are other places where the power efficiency has to be uh, cater right so there the role of open run becomes quite big open run gives you a lot of open air uh, open interfaces right like for example e2 interface a1 interface and all such things through which you can gather a lot of data right and you can take a decision whether i have to turn off the base station in this particular instant of time or not or should i uh, should i close some 10% of the antenna elements or should i close 30% of the antenna elements right so this is how on this grounds so you have to take the decision between uh, by using the open run but by using the split 8 or by the closed run you cannot take those decisions and i think uh, closing and yeah control plane uh, this this is uh, right so rf power is optimized by the self organizing networks but uh, we are also looking into uh, that how come uh, we can uh, make the uh, oran networks energy efficient by using a lot of intelligence you know based on a lot of loads what is the channel condition and something like this so this is one of the very uh, uh, you know good direction that you can look into it uh, uh, the security we already talk about it uh, you can look into the security section by using the work group 4 also like this so this is how the oran architecture basically looks like you have an smo which is also called a service management and orchestration framework where your non real time rake works and then you have a near real time rake uh and then you have uh, in the in the uh in the non real time rake you have rfs in the real real time you have xfs and then we have something new is called as dfs which is run on the e2 nodes or also called as ocucp ocuup odu and the oru so we have new different types of an apps called as dfs can anyone tell me what is uh, rf xf and df what is the full form what is the name of it uh so the sudanshu ans question is uh, what is the full form of xap what is the full form of an rf what is the full form of df not bf i am like xap rf they are apps for the rig i know but what does an x in the xap stands for then what is an r which is stand for an rf or what is a d in the df okay i think no one knows the answer so basically df stands for distributed applications so they are distributed different the different e2 nodes uh, xap is basically called as an extensible application right and uh, then we have the rf which is running into the non real time rake uh, is uh, i i also don't really remember over my head right now what's an r stands for an rf but for an x is called as an extensible application and d stands for a distributed application right so this is how the whole architecture basically looks like you have different applications machine learning applications and all such things now you you see a lot of blocks inside this uh, 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 in this architecture right so one of the block is uh, uh, app store another one is conflict mitigation uh, can you tell me what are these blocks they basically do what is an app store what is a conflict mitigation Yeah, exactly. These are uh, 
these are the uh, these are the virtualized functions in the open run but what they basically do right so i think uh, app store that you all you all understand right uh, that uh, uh, it's just like uh, the mobile uh, app, app stores right you have in in android as well as in ios right the most important thing is the conflict mitigation here the conflict mitigation is the most important block set here because let's say if you develop two accepts right right and if both of the accepts you know or one of the accepts is targeting the throughput but another accept is also targeting the throughput but he is also looking into the energy efficiency right so now you can see it should not be there the, that there are multiple applications that are targeting the same uh, function you know so how you will decide which one is good right so you basically have to mitigate the conflict between the two applications i'm not sure rf basically means uh, ran application pr platform i think it is also not uh, ran application protocol i have to see i will get i will get back to you so conflict mitigation is the most important block set here right because it basically uh, con uh, mitigate the conflicts between the different applications now let's say we when we say there is no vendor lock in multiple vendors can come up with their different accepts right and let's say one accept is targeting one of the feature and another accept is targeting the another feature right because of one except there is a deg degradation for, of the another except so we should not do this thing right we have to conflict the mitigations between the different excepts who are targeting the same functionalities right so i think conflict mitigation is the most important uh, block set which is available inside the open run and we have to look into this so yes uh, these are accepts rfs and dfs dfs are basically receives the real time data and the kpms from the rus radio units tus and the cus as well as the enrichment information from the near real time brick and use it to execute real time uh, inference and control the lower layer functionalities rfs it comes into two different flavors which is called as virtual native functions and cloud native functions configuration management device management fault management performance management life cycle management for all network pieces are among the significant aspects of non real time brick accepts uh, defined as microservice based application which use standardized interfaces and service models to perform radio resource management by taking the data from ran computing the control actions and delivering back to the ues uh, micro cell base station and fbs so mbs is called as micro cell base station fbs is called as micro cell base stations right so here you can see uh, can i will go to the last uh, figure again and you can see here that you have the df and then you have the xf and then you have the rf so why do you think the df is required what's the uh, can you tell me why do you think dfs are required why not only xf and rf are good enough for us so uh, i think the answer is very clearly written here because the dfs receive the real time data and the kpms from the rus right and the dus and the cus so basically there are some of the information that we need, we we take from the from the cu du and ru and put it into the xf but they will take a lot of time to processing it and give you the answers so the latency will be high so reduce this latency we basically use the dfs which runs inside the uh, cu and the dus and the another thing is the bandwidth the lot of data is like iq samples they take a lot of bandwidth when we share this data with the with the real time with the real time break or the near real time break so to reduce this bandwidth and everything we need to we need to look into the some new application which are also called as dfs so we have some open ended questions uh, how can open ran make energy efficient networks right how open uh, how open ran can be used for 6g security which hardware to buy how to decide where to put intelligence so these are some of the open ended question which is currently been been looking by lot of industries lot of vendors uh, because everyone is thinking that how can we make energy open run more energy efficient uh, energy efficient as i talk to you about that uh, on the basis of the network load we can take the decision open run for 6g the new group for the open run is called as ngrg security work group 11 uh, which hardware to buy the interoperability and the testing part how to decide where to put intelligence uh, you can put intelligence on cu you can put intelligence on du you can put intelligence on real, real near real time break non real time break but who will decide how you decide you have to think about it right so 
these are some of the open ended questions that uh, we need to think about it okay then uh, so uh, we should we wait for the questions here for this presentation or we should first start the demo and then we go to the questions uh, so but, yeah. so yeah we yeah. can do, do the demo first and then at the end we can take few questions right so that okay that perfect yeah okay so uh, let's do a demo. So this demo is basically based on the network slicing. Uh, so the network slicing, you know, basically is enable the diverse requirements of the 5G beyond networks by creating the multiple isolated end-to-end -end virtual networks dedicated to different services like EMBB, URL, CC, and MMTC. The network slicing concept was added to the 5G uh, realm to enhance and differentiate the network supports. The main benefits for network slicing is its ability to create isolated networking solutions on demand which can then be customized for certain applications and provision of support for slice tenants with slice management capabilities. The most important network function is network slice selection function, which is also called as NSSF. The NSSF is a control plane function within a 5G core network. The NSSF is connected to the AMF using the N2 reference point, right? The AMF can request the NSSF to complete uh the to complete uh to complete network slice selection during the ue registration procedure so i will skip all those theories and i will come directly to the demo of the network slicing so we have a demo here in this terms we have different network functions which is called as nssf right um and then we have amf which is also called as access and mobility mobility management function we have three different slice, slice one, slice two, slice three. And we have three different UEs, which is connected to the G node Bs, G node B1, G node B2, G node B3, right? And uh, each slice have its own UPF, SMF, and the NRF. So you can see one NRF has been shared between slice one and slice two, and one slice three have uh, its own NRF. All the NRFs are connected to AMF. And uh, so, yeah, this is how the architecture looks like. Now I would like to understand one thing from you. How basically you decide this uh, this slice? How you define the slice? What are the variables in the G node B or in the core network define the slice? The, they can write in the chat if anyone knows about it. Uh, no. So there is something. That's why I didn't show you the theory. So there is something which is called a single slice, ne uh, single network slice assistance information. So a single network slice is identified by its single network slice assistance information, right? A set of one or more slices identified by its network slice assistance information. A AMF can provide the NSSF with the following information: requested NSSAI generated by the UE for from the allowed or the configured NSSAI. The NSSF uses the information provided by the AMF to verify that the UE is subscribed to each of the S NSSAI belonging to the requested NSSAI, right? Now, what is the values which is have under the NSSAI, right? Let's look into those. So we have two different values. One is called as SST and another is called as SD. Does anyone know what is SST stands for and SD stands for? Yeah, exactly right, Sudanshu. And EUE can go up to eight NSSAI. He can he can request for eight NSSAI. SST is slang for service uh, select service type, right? And SD is slang for service differentiator. A network slice is identified by its uh, S NSSAI, which is a concatenation of a SST, which is slice service type, which is of eight bits, and a service differentiator, which is of twenty four bits. The SST refers to the expected uh, network slice behavior in terms of features and services it can support. 3GPP has standardized the SST values as SST1 for EMBB traffic, SST2 for URLCC, and SST3 for MMTC. The SD is optional, but can be used to differentiate between network slices, which may have the same SST value. This may be used if an operator offers the same service type to multiple subscriber groups. For example, Subscriber group A may be offered the EMBB services using SST1 and SD1, whereas subscriber group B may be offered the EMBB services using the SST1 and SD2. So both of them are using the EMBB services, but they are using, uh, so we use different services 
so we use service differentiator as differentiating between the different uh, of the same services so this is how the plmn configuration look like what is plmn stands for we all know public land mobile networks it comprises of mcc and mnc mcc is called as mobile country code and mnc is called as mobile network code and in that plmn we have to define the uh, single network slice assistance information list in which we have to define sst and ssd right okay let's now start the demo so first of all we will start the demo in terms of we will start the core network then we will run the wireshark to capture the packets on the demo oai bridge then we will run the g node and ue simulators we will capture the pdu session on the wireshark we will look at the ip addresses and then we will start the traffic right Okay, it's coming up right. Okay, let me first of all build the core network. Right. So I will make the screen bigger so that everyone can see. Okay, let's go first into the CD open air interface, Docker compose. Then I will run my command okay. to bring Can you just yeah. increase the font size? The font is too small. Yeah, yeah, I will do that, yeah. Sorry. View zoom in. Let me know where you think it's good enough for everyone to see. Is this good enough? Yeah, this is fine. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay, thank you. So now here we will run the core network. So I will go and my start my core network with this particular command line option, which basically tells to my terminal go to this folder and bring up this particular command, right? So my core network is up and running. I will go to the Wireshark and I will capture my packets. So when I will open my Wireshark, you can see we will find a particular bridge with the name of demo OAI. Right, so here is a bridge which is coming with the name of demo OAI. I will click on this particular bridge to capture the packets. Okay, can you get stable? Okay, now I will capture the packets on demo OAI, right? And every network function is talking to each other. I will only capture the packet which is called as NGAP. Yeah, I can provide this. Uh, demo via EML files, right? I will look all these questions later on and let me finish this demo. Uh, now, uh, once the Docker, uh, once the core network is up and running, the uh, another thing that we will do is we will run the Wireshark and capture the packets. Now, I will run the G Node P and the UE simulators. Uh, so, first of all, I will run the URM sim, right? So I will go and run the URM sim here. Right, so my URM sim is up and running. Then I will go and build my G node V sim. So my so I need to put the sudo here, right? Always you need a super user to do. Right, so my uh, my G node VSIM is also ready. Now I will ask everyone my my G node B to connect to the UE to connect to G node B by using the slicing information. Right, so you need only to connect to the slices which you have been asked for.
Okay, give me a uh, give me a second. I need to check say, some of the problem that I'm getting in building up the demo. Meanwhile, can you take up the questions, uh, Sanjay? I, I let me just give me five minutes to check this thing. Uh, yeah, Bharat. So uh, you will take some time, uh, like uh, just for five minutes. Give me just, just you can start taking up the questions, and then I will come up. So I think the best person will be you to take the questions and answer those questions, right? So mm -hmm. I think we can wait for two, three minutes before we take those questions. Yeah, just give me a second. Sure. No problem. Okay, now we can see that uh, our both the G node BCM and URNCM is up and healthy. And when we come to the Wireshark, uh, we can see that uh, we will try to understand this Wireshark. You can all see my screen, right? Uh, we will try to yeah, yeah, come and okay. okay, so we will try to see and understand the Wireshark. Here you can see two different video sessions, which is in the green color. So now how does this whole process goes on? We need to understand this thing. So first of all, it's one of the requests is called as ng, ng, ng setup request and response. So this is the information which has been shared between the RAN and the core network. So the G node B basically tells to the core network that, okay, hi, I'm here. I want to get registered to you and core network says, okay, I will register to you. That's it. Then the UE comes into the picture and UE says, okay, can you please uh, register me with the core network? He will tell to the RAN that can you please register to the core network? And then everything will be done over the authentication registration request will come and then all the authentication security more everything will be done and then the ue will tell okay once the registration is uh, done can you please establish a pdu session now pdu session is also called as protocol data unit where basically you are uh, setting up a user plane or a gtp tunnel where you will send all your data uh, so the PDU session will take place and then it has been done, right? So for one of the slides, we can uh, we create the PDU session. The similar process will go for the another slides and we create another PDU session for the another slide, right? Uh, you can, in this particular uh, thing, you can basically go and read as much as logs you want to read. For example, you can go and read the log of AMF, sudo docker logs, OAI AMF. And here you can see that we have two basically UEs, which is the number of 28095 and 28095.37 and 35. They are registered to the base station, right? So this is how you can see uh, that uh, by, by using different logs, you can understand which UE has been registered, which UE has not been registered by taking the captures in the Wireshark. For here, you can understand like, okay, uh, how does the PDU session is basically working? Now, some of them or some of you will be asking, okay, what is the source and the destination? So these are all the IP addresses of all the network functions which are involved in the core network. So they are talking to each other. Mostly they are the three important network functions, AMF, SMF, and the UPF. They are more important network functions, which basically helps you to do the registration of the UE and setting up the PDU session of the UE. Right. So this is how you can also save up, save the, uh, save the logs if you want. Now let me run the traffic. So uh, I have two UEs with the two different IP addresses. I will run the traffic to both the UEs. So for running the traffic, you need an external data network. So I have an OAI external data network. I will ping to this particular IP address and you can see I'm getting the response from that particular IP addresses, right? And then there's another IP address 12.2.1. Mm, no, I think this is not the IP address. Then this must be. Yeah. 
so this is the another ue ip address so i am getting the two ues one with the ip address of 12.11.2 and the another ip address is 12.21.2 right so i can run this refix which basically tells me that okay the data is going through if you are more interested you can uh, write here icmp also i think it should work right no icmp no i have never tried it but uh, you should see if you run the yeah you can see here right uh my data network is basically sending the packets to this ip address of 12.2.1 that uh, uh you know the reply and then we are getting the reply also so again i will run the can you hear me sanjay can you hear me yeah yeah we can hear you please go ahead yeah. okay, so again let's see if i run this uh, uh, data traffic right so i am asking my data network is asking to this ue that i am sending you four i uh, pings right so this is how see the reply is uh from here this is reply is gone uh, one, 145 sends the IP, uh, this 12.1.2 and then this is the reply right the request and then the reply so four request has been sent the four reply has been given from this so these are the freedom that has been given by the open source software for you to understand how the 5G is working. Uh, you know, thanks Gopichan for giving the command. Uh, I think let me just try to that work because I never use multiple protocols at the same time. But if Gopichan is saying it will work. Okay, perfect. So yeah. So you can see now we have very good pictures in the multiple color pictures where we have green for the PDU sessions, pinks for the pinks, right? So yeah, that's all which this, this, this gives you a lot of freedom, you know, now you can go and, you know, change the YAML files that you are asking for me that uh, you can, you can create your own slices with your MCCs and MNCs and you can put your own SST and SD, right? And then you can play with all those things and you can you can use it for different types of uh, services that you want to deliver to the different ues right so yeah that's all from my side this is this is a, this is a small demo that i want to show you that network slicing is capable and you can you can build it in your own virtual machines and uh, then you can play with those things you can gather a lot of data like this what has been in front of me over the wire shark and yeah hey uh thanks Bharat. thanks for the uh, wonderful session right so and before we uh conclude the session and before we uh you know maybe take up the question few questions just wanted to understand you know what kind of uh, overall job opportunity it brings and you know uh, for the people who are completely new to open and or just starting with open ran right so what kind of areas what kind of domains they should look for of course it depends on their expertise the expertise what they have currently Right. But uh, in general, if you really want to generalize, what are the areas they should target for the future career growth? And how, how do we see the career growth in the open and domain for next, uh, you know, two, three years? And especially the 6G coming in, there is a lot of buzz around 6G and uh, yeah. you need to see something yeah. on 6G front uh, on open line as well. Yeah. Right. So yeah. what are your suggestions? What are the things you see? And that will help uh, people in general. And then they may ask some specific questions. Sir. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, first of all, uh, as of now, 6G is nothing, you know, uh, uh, 6G is more about uh, 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 just a marketing term as of now. Uh, I think 6G has been more about looking into two different perspectives. One is more about when we have different networks, like for example, you have a network of Wi-Fi and if you have a network of 5G, how 5G and Wi-Fi can work together, you know. Uh, uh, and then as the another one is looking into the new spectrums. Uh, maybe you have heard about uh, recently that iPhone 15 has been launched and then they have given a support for Wi-Fi 6E, which is basically uh, in the area of 6 gigahertz band. So 6 gigahertz band has been a very much importance for every MNO, especially for the company which I am also working for, you know, and we are very much investly, uh, investing a lot in this particular bands to get the, the get this bands for the mobiles operators and then we can, you know, uh, do the dual operations between unlicensed and the licensed bands. Uh, so as of now, 6G is more about, uh, you know, uh, looking into the new directions like 
one of the example is uh, some networks how different networks go uh, can work uh, under one umbrella uh, some of the companies are also looking into the new radios you know some for example called joint uh, joint communication and sensing uh, everyone is looking into like okay uh, uh, how can how come our radio uh, can sense everything and uh, you know and can can kick take the decision based on those things so uh, and the another question that you talk about the new research directions and the new job opportunities that is coming in definitely open run is the very very huge topic and a lot of companies are working into this thing but i think uh, we have to narrow down it uh, because uh, if we have to narrow down in the perspective of taking our research directions you know uh, for example you have to see uh, uh, some of, as i told you during my session also some of the guys will be working totally on the file layer or on the rf domain then they have to see that okay how come uh, they can use the intelligence in the rf domain on the physical domain you know or uh, recently i am also working one of the project where we are gathering iq samples to make our uh, radio more intelligent you know and uh, the another thing can people talk about okay how come we can make rigs you know uh, there are a lot of companies like for example mavenia they are making a lot of rigs uh, so you know i think uh, there is a lot of huge opportunities everywhere in the market you know any any company who works in the area of telecom definitely they are working in the area of open run maybe you can talk about nokia ericsson and huawei will says no we don't work in the area of uh, uh, this thing but uh, overall there are a lot of vendors there are a lot of companies who are working in this uh, uh, in this open run the another important thing that i think is uh the open source software community right there are a lot of open source software community which has been coming up and they are giving you a lot of freedom right for an example uh open air interface the demo that i showed you uh srs run open 5gs uh free 5gc something like this you know uh these these slan you know th these are the companies who basically uh building the softwares and giving you a lot of freedom uh for example a lot of masters project a lot of bachelors projects you know you can build these things everything by your own in your virtual machines like i saw one of the questions was like uh, how much capacity you don't need a lot of capacity you just need an ubuntu uh, or you just need a virtual machine in your windows laptop and and good intel i7 processor is for four cores it's good enough for you to work for, for this uh, things right so yeah i mean uh, i think uh, all these open source software communities uh, different uh, different uh, organizations which is working into these areas and uh, you know if you if you try to write some research papers also i think there's a huge acceptability around all the conferences when you when you test your algorithms over this particular open source software right recently one of my paper has been accepted in one of the top conferences and my paper was some based on this thing you know that one of an algorithm that i have developed i tested them on the open air interface platform so it gives you a lot of uh, it gives a lot of you know a uh, good impression on the reviewers of the conferences also that everything has uh, like okay good enough you done the simulations but you have been tested on the real time hardwares or the real time uh, operating uh, softwares right so yeah great uh, good to hear that bharat and maybe we can you can just look at some questions from the chat box and try to answer the couple of questions because we are already at uh, you know almost 100 minutes uh, we have spent in the session it's so maybe little mm -hmm. too long maybe we can take couple of sessions uh, sorry couple of questions right i have also uh, shared the link of the feedback form in the chat box i'll request everyone to fill the feedback form and everyone who fills the feedback form uh, we will be sharing the participation certificate on email within 7 days 7 working days right so i'll request everyone to uh, you know fill your feedback share your uh, thoughts uh, you know what you felt about the session how it can be improvised and we will be try to you know implement some of these things in the upcoming sessions right so uh, bharat you can look at some questions in the chat box and try to answer those questions yeah so one of the question was uh, what is the major role of the rig from sudhanshu so the major role of the rig you know as it is defined is just to put the intelligence in the network as from from the name is pretty much clear is called ran intelligent controller and uh, you can build you can you know you can deploy a lot of uh, machine learning uh, applications now when you say rig right is rig is equivalent to self organizing network yeah you can say that thing yeah rig is basically a self organizing network but uh, when i say rig i talk it from the perspective of open run because you get more open interfaces you give more freedom for the lot of more kpis or more lot of more kpms can be considered 
so that's why uh, brick is the most more modified version of this on right or of the self organizing network okay uh but in 6G, I heard bringing AI is one of the layers within core run and the transport. Yeah, pretty, pretty, yeah, that's true. You know, that's what I'm telling you. Different people have different perspective of 6G. If you ask the MNOs, you know, they will say no 6G will be based same as like 5G. You know, there will be nothing change in 5G and 6G. But if you ask different vendors, they will say no 6G will be an AI based uh, communication where, where the radios will be used the artificial intelligence to sense the environment and then tell you. Uh, then then to tell you that okay uh, this is how the uh, modulation looks like and i will transmit with this particular modulation index or modulation waveform right but uh, some of the vendors says no we will not do these things you know so does core network interact similarly with oran as in traditional run yes it interacts similarly with the with the oran as well as traditional run uh, but i find i know you don't um, know but oran well, core network also have one network function which is called as nwdaf network function network data analytics function which basically allows you to put a machine learning intelligence also there. So you can think from that perspective. For open run, okay, this question is going up. Let me. Do we use other split options? No, uh, I think the question is uh, we only use split 7.2x uh, or uh, split 2. Do we have another options? No, I we have other options, but we haven't used those things. Uh, only the more stress was given on split 7.2 and split 6 only. Why most of the operators still 5G C is facing challenges as ROI except EMBB. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't get the question. Can you why most of the operators still 5G core network is facing challenges as so, ROI? Uh, question, is, question is like you know, because they're not getting returns on the investments what they have made. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Sure, like, some somewhere like rest of India or I thought return of investment. Uh, no, return on investment, <laughs> yeah, basically. Return on investment. Yeah, because uh, the point is this, like if you want to put uh, URLCC applications, you know, you have to thought about those companies who are basically looking into the URLC application, like for an industry, robots and everything. And for that, your network should support a latency of less than 10 milliseconds, right? You know, and I think right now, as of now, the network does not support that particular good latency. So that's why uh, I think 5G advanced that you have heard about release 18. Uh, it basically talks about those particular, specifically about URL CCs also. There's something called as L4S if you have heard about it. So you can go and read about L4S also. Are operators welcoming ORAN with open arm or do they still prevent additional RAN? I think again, this is a pol quite political question, you know, and the answer should be very diplomatic. Right? Uh, yes, uh, again, I will say that, you know, it should be based on continents. You know, US says that yes, open RAN is very welcoming in Europe. Lot of lot of uh, countries says no open run will not be welcomed right but some of the companies says yeah we will welcome the open run but again the security is another issue as in germany germany is quite in a favor of open run but security they will not play with the security of the network so yes what are the orchestration product available in the market for network slicing okay.